I think just leave this clip here. I just want to notice something here. You said before about the build-up of the two and the three. I actually prefer the three and yes. the two because I think the two wide, wider players can then step in. But what's interesting here is when you find yourself in this position, is that Fernandinho there? Yes. He's actually now dropping in between the centre-backs to make the three. the three. So does that then mean... It? So I'm trying to think of Pep Guardiola's culture and the messages to you because the pitch is always changing. So Fernandinho's in here. He's trying to receive the ball from the centre-backs. Now Fernandinho drops in between his centre-backs. Does that mean then there's more onus on you now to get involved yes. and be involved? Involved in the build-up. Yes, basically, if you play with uh, two strikers, then you will want the three to create that, you know, spare man. And obviously, when something like this happened, I remember a session where we were playing like this and we were work on it, working on it. The signal was Fernandino goes there. Then obviously, I have to come here to create the two, and David will come in the half space. And you find that box that you you, you spoke about, and and all of this during my time was to leave the space free for the people on the side. So again, later in, the, in, in his time, you had Leroy Sané and you had Sterling yeah. and you had Mares. So you can imagine being a right back, having a one-on-one -on -one with 50 meters in your back, a player controlling the ball and actually you know, driving at you of this quality is very difficult to defend. You know Pep Guardiola better than anyone. You know, you know him as soon as he comes to, to England and we associate him with Obviously, ticky tacky, great football, attack and play goals. Is this a guy who puts as much emphasis on his training sessions and his setup with his team, actually defensively and being organised, especially for counter attacks? But I think that's what people want to see because we want to see, you know, we're talking about West Ham and we're saying it's not enough because we want attractive football and we want offensive football. Yes, of course, but if you don't concede goals, you don't lose a game. And for him, that, you know, phase of fullback coming in, start with the fact that you can defend better because you have your strong defenders actually set and always in advance to the wingers. So his first thought are defending if we lose the ball because the only way you can hurt Pep's team is on the transition or set pieces. From that moment, you work on set pieces, you are focused and you, know, you don't concede and you don't concede the transition. How don't you concede the transition? Having your defenders defending rather than having your fullback really wide you lose the ball and then you open. That's very simple, but that's, 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 his, that's his aim. Come sit back, back down, Gail. If, if, on, um, up all night. If, um, <laughs> if Pep Guardiola, you think, you know, we, you talked about <clears throat> this sort of this shift and coming full circle for Pep Guardiola, and now he's got these almost four centre backs across the back four at times. If he was to create his prototype full back, what do you think it would actually look like? I think he doesn't have prototype. He, he's got the luxury of having a club that can support him in what he wants. So, for instance, when we left, he went to get uh, Benjamin Mendy and Kai Walker. And he also had the luxury to play Fabien Delph, a midfield, who played left back when Benjamin Mendy got injured. So I don't think you can... I think Pep is very good at... Um, he has his own philosophy, but he's very good at adapting to the team. So the weakness of the opponent, he will play on that. Today, he's got the chance to have the best defenders who are also very much composed on the ball. You, I, I will not name names, but you have clubs that couldn't even dream of doing it because the players are not equipped to have the ball and keep the ball under pressure. We can all keep the ball, but to accept the pressure, you know, so you attract someone to come and last minute you find the third man, you know, through, through your teammates. It's not given to a, a, anyone. So he's lucky because he can have both. He can have strong defenders who are mobile, uh, fast, and that can play football. You, you I think speak, it's interesting what he said there. Yeah. Sorry, Dave, is that we keep going back to that clip. You're involved in you know, the fullbacks coming in, and, and teams are doing that now in, in different ways. But after one year in the Premier League, he almost went away from that. And the two fullbacks you're talking about, mm -hmm. Mendy and certainly Kyle Walker, I remember last season him saying Kyle Walker's not capable of going in there to play into midfield. So after being here a year, he almost bought, he's like, almost like. You could say our typical Premier League fullbacks, you know, powerful, real energy to get up and down the, the side. So, I mean, it's, I, I always feel as if Pep's slightly ahead of everyone and people are almost copying or trying to take little chinks. And why wouldn't you? He's the best. But he's now in terms of, he's put the centre back in there now. It's John Stones, isn't it? Rather than a fullback only, it's John Stones. But not any centre back, John Stones. We, we can see yes. it with, you know, example, Liverpool are trying with Gomez. And it's, it's working, but it's not working the way. 
we expect and probably Klopp want him to, to do. So you have to recognise the attribute of your you, players and play on your strength. You work with some great managers. You obviously talk about Pep Guardiola as, you know, right up there as, as someone who's very special. But what qualities would Arsene Wenger have had, perhaps that are slightly different, that, that maybe Pep Guardiola would have liked to have had? I think it's a different generation, but I think the, the, what Arsene had, he was able to identify your strongest quality and make you great within his methodology, his game plan, accordingly to, to your quality. So if you look at the left back, you had um, Van Brokost, you had uh, Ashley Cole, you had Gael Clichy, you had Karen Gibbs, you had Armand Traore, all different, but in a way, all similar. On the right, you had the same, you had Lawrence, Sanya, Eboué. So I think in his head, he had a game plan, a methodology, and basically he was going Saul Campbell, Johan Juru, Pascal Sigan, Sanderos. So pretty much the player that look to have the same attribute, 4-4-2, and then he evolved in 4-3-3. But uh, I think that was his strength. He was asking you to play with... He wasn't trying to develop your weakness. He wanted, to you, he wanted you to play on your strongest points. And I think that was his, uh, his way, and I think he did, he did well, like, really well like this. Quick answer. Who's the best left-back in the world right now? If, if we count, I don't know, it's, it's very difficult, but if we count Ake as, as being a, a left back, because that's the position he's playing, you can't really argue that he's, he's, he's not up there. But I really like Cancelo before he left for, 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 for the argument they had. I think at that moment, Cancelo is, is the best in the position. Final thought, Gail, and it's interesting, a lot of the questions that we've asked you on, on various things, you've brought it back round to some sort of tactical analysis. It's clearly the way that you're sort of programmed and you've, you've mentioned a couple of times you're working with Thierry Henry with France under 21s and I think the Olympic team as well mm -hmm. moving forward. Is this where you see yourself now and would you like your own team to coach one day and what would it look like? Yeah well you know it's, it's a process really and uh, when I left City after working with Pep it was really the moment where I felt obviously I, I'm getting older so I'm starting to think ahead and I'm thinking when I'm watching this guy Pep it's actually beautiful to, to see. Put aside the result and the silverware and the trophies and all the fame, because obviously that's, that's, that's his story, but the details and the effort that he puts into every training session and the way he manages his group, you like him or you don't like him, you will have different opinions. It was beautiful to see. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna try it. And then obviously I'm going to Istanbul. Uh, I have a close relationship with the manager. And then from there, I can either go back to France or come back to England and I decide to go to Geneva, a smaller club where I will have a little bit more responsibility, starting to pass my badges. And obviously, since the moment I started to work with Pep, it's hard for me to distance myself from his philosophy. Mm. And the chance I have today is that I stopped playing football and I find myself the assistant of Cherry, who is pretty much on the same arm, on the same line as, as him. So um, would I want to be a coach one day? Yes. Would I be good enough? We're working on it. But, um, you know, eight years at Arsenal, six years at City. Uh, I've been champion in, in Istanbul also. Um, I've been lucky to have teams where we possess the ball and we, we play attractive football. Will I be able to do it? Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully.